Hello, this is Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous, wanting to jump into your life to give you helpful tools, practical tools to help you not only go through your divorce, but to go through this difficult time of a pandemic. So I have invited one of the experts that I appreciate her skills, also her um, work with individuals. I've referred several people over to this organization called Lifeology here in Ada, Michigan. And so we have with us Katie Zvernik, who is an LPC supervisor, experienced child and parenting therapist, as well as co-owner of Lifeology Counseling in Ada, Michigan. Katie specializes in helping families through tough transitions. Boy, we have one going on right now. She especially enjoys helping families in which children struggling with symptom, uh, symptoms of anxiety or depression or who are having difficult behaviors. Since coronavirus started, Katie's been focusing on providing low cost free options to parents who are struggling with all the changes. I appreciate the support for children because on our hearts, as we go through our own divorce, dealing with our own stuff, we also have children who are dealing with their stuff. So welcome, Katie, thank you for joining us this morning. Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much for having me on. I, I am really passionate right now about making sure that parents are connected um, with options for helping their kids because it is such a difficult time. It, it is indeed. I say it's like a double trauma going on now. Uh, if you're going through a divorce and then you have the pandemic, it's a lot. So I want to start today, Katie, realizing that how we help our kids first and foremost is we take care of ourselves. So as the parents with children right now within their home, confined to the home, give us some techniques for self-care for the parents first, mm -hmm. and then we'll jump into the children. Sure. So I think um, this is a really timely question. And a lot of what I hear from parents right now is, um, you know, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. I feel like I'm failing. Um, I feel like I'm not doing anything well. And they are getting a lot of um, prompts from media or from, uh, you know, social media, like those little images um, that say like, take care of yourself, take care of yourself. And people really don't know how to do that. Um, and that's pretty normal, especially as you're in this parenting phase, um, it becomes about taking care of your littles. And so um, if you don't know where to start with that, that's really, really okay. And it's very typical. So some of the things that um, we recommend or that I recommend is to start small. Um, and so for example, at the end of every day, it can be really helpful to kind of take stock of your day. So spend five or six minutes and think about what went really, what went well, um, what was a big struggle today, um, and then something that I'm grateful for. And so really kind of identifying those things gives your brain a chance to process what happened for the day, um, but also leaves you in a place that's more encouraging and more empowering. Um, one of the things I'm also recommending for parents because they're stuck at home with their kids all day, every day, most of them, um, and the pressure of that is enormous. Um, and unless you are in it, it's really hard to even imagine how difficult that it is. Um, so one of the things that can be really helpful is getting up a little bit earlier than your kids or staying up later than your kids so that you have some time to decompress, um, to think, um, if you're a person of faith, to pray, if you know your social support is really important, then you reach out to friends. Um, it can be time to reconnect with your spouse, um, all of those kinds of things. So that's really important. We also have been recommending mindfulness. And I know that's kind of one of those words right now that's really popular, but um, it can be really very helpful. There are some apps that are free that have some good like five minute meditation or five minute body check to see how your body's doing, how are you managing your anxiety and things like that. So. Um, yeah, I think that those are kind of our go-to recommendations at this point. I like how you said what went well. You didn't say what went wrong, what went bad. You used the term, and it's escaping me right now, but it, it was a more gentle approach to like, mm -hmm. 
what what could we maybe look at and do better mm -hmm. um, and and how important is it right now that we don't that we're not so hard on ourselves that we do have compassion for ourselves especially going through a divorce and also mm -hmm. going through this pandemic yes so um a lot of us have um built in expectations that either we have for ourselves or society has for us um, in our normal everyday life so um, generally speaking we often think that we should just be able to handle things um, and that you know that kind of pervades into um, you know making sure my kids are in good emotional shape making sure I'm in good physical shape our finances are taken care of I'm working well the house is put together the yard looks okay like all of these things um, and so what happens is when we're not doing those things well on a normal basis we start to give ourselves guilt and shame about that i should be better at this i should be better at this there's something wrong with me i can't hack it um, and so since you're now also in a pandemic we have frankly the inability to do all of those things that's not it's not reasonable right now to maintain all of those expectations you will not do it because you cannot because you are a human but then if we take on top of that and pile on the shame and guilt then it becomes this very complicated confusing feeling mess that's hard to get out of and then it's sort of overwhelming and we get kind of lost so um, to kind of flip that and do it differently when you have a thought about um, oh my gosh the house is a disaster I'm home all the time why isn't the laundry caught up um, I should be able to take care of that so instead if we take that and make it more neutral and we say oh my gosh the laundry isn't caught up sometimes things get behind and kind of insert a more neutral more forgiving thought something you might say to a friend that can be really helpful in taking some of that pressure off mm -hmm. wonderful 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 words okay so now let's get into the children i know you work with smaller children you work with teens i've inter interviewed you before about teens so if you want to speak to both of those how do we help our smaller children right now because they're having their own anxiety of the unknown they've now they've really lost connection with their friends uh, for with their school and and now they're going through the divorce their parents divorce too so how can we help our children right now yeah so that's a really good question um so the impact on kids for both divorce and for the pandemic is gonna be different per child. Um, and so most kids are sort of out of whack in both of those situations, but now we have them together. So it's it's like what you had talked about before, it being sort of a double whammy. Um, so in addition to um, the divorce shifting, the rearranging of family um, with the coronavirus, kids are also experiencing a loss of contact with friends, um, a loss of normal, what feels like normal. Um, parents are acting weird, frankly, you know, because this is how it feels to the kids. Parents are stressed or they're depressed or, you know, um, irritable. And so they're not quite sure how to be around us. Um, they've also lost their enjoyable events and activities. And so this is sort of an upheaval of the normal life. Um, and so for both teens and children, like smaller children, it's gonna be really important that you try to allow them to feel what they're feeling and not assume. And so it's really different to say, um, it seems like you're having a tough day. Tell me what's happening for you. Um, that's really different. You could say that to a teen or a child and it would work equally well. Um, if uh, that's different than saying you must be really nervous about what's happening or you must be so sad that you don't get to see your friends because then you know if they're not then they take on this responsibility like I should I should be I should be really sad and I should be really nervous oh yes that's true you know and so we don't want to we don't want to make it worse um, but if you can just be open to it you know um, if you so you can say if you want to talk about it I'm always here to listen um, and really let them have their big feelings. It doesn't mean that you need to change the rules in the house. So kids can have big feelings, but they don't need to have big behaviors. Does that kind of make sense? 
It, it does make sense because that you want that structure, which is right. also very healthy for your kids right now. Exactly. Exactly. So if you have, um, if you have a kiddo who's being really irritable, that's I, Kathy, I cannot tell you how many times a day I have this conversation with moms right now. It's like, honestly, three or four times a day with different moms who are like, my kids have lost it. Um, and I'm so done. I'm so frustrated. I'm overwhelmed. I feel like I'm crying half the day. Um, and so, you know, we talked about being kind to yourself. Um, for your kids, it's really important that like, if the, if bedtime is typically at eight o'clock or nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, hold it, hold that same bedtime. Um, if we don't allow sugary snacks for our morning snack, then, then don't allow it. Um, this is not the time to throw all of your rules out the window because your kids need to have some semblance of structure just like you do. And it gives them <laughs> of security right now also, correct? Right. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It makes them feel safer psychologically. And I think it's helpful also, Katie, for folks to know that if you reach that end of your um, end of your patience, you're not alone. There are other mothers and other fathers, as you just stated, that are there are dealing with this. There's a lot to deal with. And so give us some positive, proactive things that we can help. You mentioned structure, which I totally agree with and believe we, we need that for ourselves and for our children. But what other proactive things might we do right now to help our children? Mm -hmm. So obviously we like the structure. Um, I like to build in, this is something that my family does and I recommend it to a fair number of families. We do highs and lows at the end of the day and I um, anticipate doing that for a lot of years. So at the end of the day, everybody in the family is together. It's either at dinner or at bedtime or whatever. Um, and we share our highs and lows from the day. So high being something that happened that I enjoyed um, and a low being something that I didn't like. Um, and so since we build that in, it's a natural time for things to come up that have been difficult um, or that they might need help processing. It's also good timing for them to see what it's like for us to share as adults things that are difficult and then how we're handling them. Um, so they can kind of see how to problem solve. They get some modeling out of that. Um, I know that you, that parents are hearing everywhere, get your kids outside, get them active. Um, it's really, really helpful emotionally, but I don't want you to use that as a reason to shame yourself if you're not. And so, you know, this is going to be a balance for you. If it's on Tuesday, they were outside for an hour and a half and on Wednesday they were inside all day. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's, it's helpful to build in structure and routine. Um, but don't, be so rigid that you become really angry with yourself or disappointed in yourself if you can't follow through each day. Does that kind of help? I, I love that because I know that being a mom or a dad, you always have those guilt factors that you go to bed and you, and you, feel, you do feel this blame and shame. Oh, I should have done it better. I should have been perfect. Should have done it um, a different way. So we do that. That's natural. But I always talk to folks and say that consistent, if you can be that consistent parent, it's so helpful for your children. I want to ask you, Katie, you mentioned something really helpful, and that is listening, asking the highs and lows, but then the importance of listening. A lot of parents don't do that real well. We want to teach, we want to tell people what they should be, our children, what they should be thinking. So help us become better listeners to our children. Yes. Okay. Love this. That's such a good question. So a lot of what I see when we start coaching parents at the office about talking to their kids. So I'll ask the, the kiddo a question. So for example, I'll say, you know, what, um, give me a low for this week. And so then the child will say, um, well, I got in trouble about having the TV on for too long, but I didn't really, um, I didn't mean to, and it was because, and then the parent jumps in and says, well, we've talked about this and you know that, okay, highs and lows time is not time for teaching or correcting. So even if you disagree with what they are saying, it doesn't matter. So you can, that's not a teaching moment. Do that part later. 
Um, so in the moment of if they're sharing something that was difficult for them, even if you think it was self-inflicted, even if it's because they made a mistake, that it doesn't, that is not the time for this. And so it's time to say, yeah, I bet that was disappointing. Oh, that was probably kind of scary, you know? Um, and without making it, you're, you're absolutely right, without making that a teaching moment, because that's, those are two separate things and they're both very important, but we can't teach over the emotions. That's not, that's, that is going to cause more frustration for the kiddos. And it also helps our relationships with our children. I mean, hopefully this is going to pass this time where we're, we're secluded, confined into our homes. But later, when we look back at this time, we want to have used it wisely. Mm -hmm. And in that listening really does give a child their own voice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really important. And it will make them feel really close to you and safe with you. Mm -hmm. which is just good for them in general, for their development. And unlike that consistent teaching mode, if you can, you know, mm -hmm. if you stay out of that mode, you need to fluctuate. You need to be listening. I love, I love this. So, so important. Um, I, I love your instruction. I love your wisdom. You are offering a parents for young children Mm -hmm. virtual group Thursday 7 30 to 8 30 April 16th May 7th and now that it's virtual it can mm -hmm. be anyone throughout the country or the world for that matter so how would they connect with you and you're going to be the facilitator mm -hmm. correct so folks will be in really good hands so yep. um, talk to us about what that is going to look like for the four weeks Yes. Um, so I'm really excited about this. I Once we launched it, I had a number of people reach out really quickly um, and say, I need to get into this. We intentionally made it really affordable um, because, Kathy, I'm hearing from so many parents that they're overwhelmed, they're, they feel like they're failing, all of these things we talked about already, and they have no idea that everyone else feels the same way. They have no idea. And so it will be so helpful to have people that you can connect with and um, that understand what it is like to get up in the morning and have no idea what's going to happen today because we have all of these hours to fill and how much pressure that is and how are we going to come up with the 47th lunch to cook in a row um, you know, and all of those pieces, what it's like, like, why bedtime has shifted, why none of us are sleeping well. Um, and so I think it's going to be really powerful. Um, so to connect with the group and that the cost for that is $20 for the whole thing for the whole four weeks. Um, and so to connect with that group, there is, um, so on our website, which is www.wefixbrains.com. And then you can just navigate to the Grand Rapids location because I happen to be running it out of Grand Rapids. You're absolutely right. There's no geographic um, requirements for it. Um, but yeah, so if you go to there, there's a list of groups that's right in there. Um, and it's also all over our Facebook page and all that stuff. So um, yeah, does that answer your question? <laughs> I forgot the other part. <laughs> it does. No. Oh. What are we going to expect? What are and and first of all, I have to say how incredibly I am such a believer in group support mm -hmm. because when you hear someone else articulate your pain or your frustration, it's like it normalizes it. I'm not the only one. That's so valuable. So, what will we be learning in your groups? Exactly. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a check-in. Um, you know, how are you? Um, kind of do that high and low. What was the struggle for you this week? What went really well? Um, and then I'm going to spend some time with education about what's happening to the kids and to the parents. Um, and then what's happening to the world psychologically and where, how we fit all in that and what kinds of feelings that's causing for us. Um, and then we're going to do some tips for making things more manageable. So each week there will be a new set of um, issues that we're addressing. So like difficult behaviors or creating a schedule that works or, you know, various things like that, um, that they can take practical tools and implement them at home if they would like to. 
Um, and then we'll have a process time at the end. So from today, what did you pick out that you want to try? Um, and then how can we support each other this week? Um, and then next time, here's what we're gonna be focusing on. So this week, be thinking about um, how that impacts you. I, I totally love that because the need right now for parents is you do need a safe space where you can be talking about what you're dealing with. Because if you're not expressing it, you're not getting rid of that tension inside of you, it's hurting you physically, it's eventually going to erupt out to the children. So get the support. This is not the time to be that independent um, soldier moving through this battle. No, you need exactly. support. Yeah, I completely agree, 1,000%. Yeah. You need, you need that support. So Katie, this has been delightful and so very, very helpful um, for our folks. And I am going to post the link for you below this interview. So if you're thinking, what, what was that link again? I will post it below this interview so you have it to connect to. And that's an incredible, gracious, and I agree. Now is the time to be helping people and to be giving. Um, so I'm holding a five week, no cost support group right now. So we need to support each other. And I'm so appreciative of Lifeology and you, Katie, uh, for your work in this field. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kathy. Again, like I, I really, I love chatting with you. You always have such great ideas and um, you're connected with such wonderful people. Um, and I, I know that the folks that come into our office that come from you are so appreciative of you. And so um, I appreciate everything you're doing in the community also. Thanks so much. So until, until next time, Katie, thank you for your time and um, take care of you. Take care of those children, get your support. Thanks for joining us, Katie.